Hello, I'm Francis Quinlan and I'm gonna play Open Up with Urban Outfitters. I got this thing right here. This guy. Let's do it. B L U E. Uh, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, that was five, right? Okay, let's open number orange three or. God, I'll break it. Can you tell us about the time you tried to extinguish a fire in your van with Gatorade? I really appreciate the homework that was done on that question. In 2009, my band Hopalong's van caught fire after the fourth of our four tires exploded. Uh, we were driving home from Birmingham, Alabama. Our, we had a tour with P.S. Elliott. We, I guess we got a flat and didn't realize it at first. And uh, Mark pulled over, fixed the flat, we got back on the road, and then after a while Mark noticed in the rearview mirror that there was a lot of smoke coming out, and we pulled over, I just want to get the brand right, it wasn't Gatorade, it was Powerade. Water didn't work, uh, it was, um, I want to say it was brake fluid, so if it's brake fluid, don't, don't listen to me, but for whatever reason Powerade got the fire out, and then Mark and I hung out in Bulls Gap, Tennessee for like four days. Not far from where Hank Williams passed. We treated ourselves to a Best Western, let me, let me add. Uh, that was a, we shelled out for that. And across the street there was a diner. The servers were very nice. And we got a lot of fried okra, I wanna say. They had fried mac and cheese too. I think it was my first time trying fried mac and cheese. You're gonna wanna edit this and post. <laughs> Can I keep this snail? The snail is awesome. I, this, this was meant to be that we were supposed to hang out together today. Can you tell us about a painting or drawing you are currently working on? Is there overlap between those mediums and your music? It's something I'm currently working on. I have a small acrylic painting at home, but I also have this painting that uh, is, it's something like, like this wide by, by that. Um, I, super on and off been working on this oil painting. I, I haven't touched it in several months, but on and off for like 11 years, working on this one big oil painting at my house. Uh, in 2016, um, two of my friends gave me these gifts. Um, one was a book of watercolor postcards, small, and the other gift from another friend was a traveling watercolor set. And that was huge for me because uh, I would do these drawings in the van and uh, to get to transition from drawing into painting was, was a big deal for me. And I, and I started doing those watercolor postcards on tour with Built to Spill and Sandy Alex G in 2016, the fall. And so I've been trying to, they're like all over my house. I was supposed to mail them to friends, but I'm totally, I just keep them for myself, so. Oops. But yeah, there's a correlation between the road, like traveling and painting for sure, but that's a lot looser than really thinking about the content of either needing to correlate. I think they just, in a lazy way, already do, because they're both, I'm writing and, and painting. So there must be some connection. If you had to sum up the message of likewise into one sentence, what would it be? One sentence. I'm not fast and I'm not concise. And that's likewise. <laughs> Uh, I would say the through line of likewise is the attempt at, at discourse between loved ones, whether friends or family, the two can be synonymous. From how simple to rare thing, how did you overcome your fear of dancing on camera? Um, I didn't. <laughs> didn't overcome it. It is an experience, but I think for me, fear is something that I might never overcome, but I don't want to ignore it. How Simple was a big jump for me as that was a conscious effort to dance on camera. And Derek Belcham is wonderful to work with. He directed both videos. Rare Thing was a lot easier for me because I was doing something I was far more comfortable with, which is painting. Uh, and it was fun to try to do that quickly. Again, I don't do anything quickly, so that was, that was a cool challenge. 
Rough Trade recently described her singing as falling somewhere between Bjork, Waxahachie, and tonsillitis. A lot has been made of your voice. What is your favorite way you have heard it described? Um, I personally know and love Katie, so that is an honor. I do not personally know Bjork, but I am also honored by that comparison. The less specific, the better, I guess. <laughs> I don't like being a, no one really likes being summed up, I guess. But I certainly love being reminded of people I admire, and those in Bjork and Waxahachie are certainly among them. I've gotten the cranberries, which is interesting. And once again, grew up. I made, uh, back when I was like 13, Mark, Mark, my brother, drummer of Hopalong, was two years older than me, and he would help me uh, navigate the waters of coolness. I never made it to cool, but he would try to help me. Uh, and one fall, he was telling me, patches are the thing, like, you, you need to have patches. And it's really punk if you make them yourself. So I had uh, bits of fabric and Sharpie, and I made a Catch-22 <laughs> patch and a cake patch, a Radiohead patch, and a Cranberries patch. I made a couple others I'm not gonna mention, but those were the, <laughs> those were the top, top ones. Speaking of Waxahachie, is it true you played at Katie and Allison's graduation party? So yeah, uh, Katie from Waxahachie uh, has a project called, had a project called P.S. Elliot that she was in with her sister Allison of the band Swearin'. Uh, yeah, I did play at their 18th birthday party. I was on tour with a band called Fake Problems and my friend Weedy Matiasich. This was January of 2007, so a while ago. Uh, I played at their birthday party at a venue called Cave Nine, I want to say, in Birmingham, Alabama, and it was a blast. Can you tell us about the differences between recording your first solo record versus your last? Technically, um, my very first solo attempt. I mean, I had help. I've always had some help. With freshman year, which is my first full-length solo, that was when um, my dad helped me go get a, we went to Guitar Center, and he got me an interface, and then I bought Cubase. For those who don't know, Cubase is a program similar to another one you probably don't know called Cakewalk. It was like a fancier version of GarageBand, a worse version of Pro Tools. No offense to, to Cubase. But I used Cubase to record most of freshman year. Um, four of the songs, my friend Chris Archibald a of a band from Doylestown called Illinois helped me with a few, as well as uh, Damien DeRose of Peasant also helped me. So yeah, lots of freshman year was recorded in my folks' basement. Uh, likewise, uh, I now have this benefit of having worked with an incredible producer, engineer, musician, mixer <laughs> for uh, over 10 years now, Joe Reinhardt. But yeah, he's in the band Hop Along as well. And we've been working together since Get Disowned. He understands <laughs> um, the moods I try to convey, uh, the tone. Our brains tend to go to the same crazy places. There was this one song we were working on together, um, Detroit Lake, and he added so many killer ideas to that. And at one point, I. Remember we were working on the verse and I was like, we should take the guitar and make it go backwards. And he was like, I was just gonna say that. A major difference being I did not know Joe Reinhardt or any of, besides my brother, or Tyler Long when I made freshman year and having there, having met all these amazing people over the years and gotten to work with them and collaborate for so long, uh, that was a huge, huge help to have for Likewise. I'm gonna open this one. Can you customize this denim jacket for us? I would be delighted. I am ready now. So is my friend. So what we have here is a work in progress. I'm gonna continue painting at home, I think, but it's been an absolute blast. Thank you, Urban, for having me, and uh, signing off, this is Francis Quinlan. So long. Woo! What's up, buddy?